Hello and welcome to the Jackson Lean in Under 10 Minutes podcast, a podcast curated to deliver you maximum information in under 10 minutes so you can get on your way to being jacked and lean. I'm Jacked and with me is the beautiful Eileen of Jacked and Lean. Eileen of Jacked and Lean and today we're going to be doing part two of our three-part pregnancy series regarding Eileen's first, second, and third trimesters of our second pregnancy here. Mm -hmm. And basically the goal of this series is to help you guys get some practical insights along with some hopefully good valuable recommendations that you can apply to your own pregnancy or clients if you work with pregnant females. So today we're going to be covering training. If you guys have not uh, looked at part one or listened to part one yet, please go back and take a look at that around Mm -hmm. nutrition. That would be on YouTube, anywhere we can listen to podcasts. So without further ado, why don't you break down the first, second, third trimester regarding training? So in first trimester, I had a lot of nausea, so I wasn't eating a lot of calories. This definitely impacted my energy levels. So originally I was training about five to six days a week and uh, it dropped down to like two or three times a week. Um, And then second trimester, my energy levels were able to increase as my calories did. And uh, we started doing a four day uh, frequency training. So we did an upper lower body split. Um, Third trimester, uh, we've done a pretty good job. I would say we've been training two to four days a week based on how I've been feeling. Um, and then I, I think in this last like two weeks, you know, I've really, um, just kind of listened to my body. We've slowed down, uh, quite a bit, I think, um, as my body has been preparing for labor. Yeah. And that's an important point that when you're especially this deep in pregnancy or early on in the first trimester, when you're not feeling too hot, you need to listen to your body and kind of go with the flow. And Eileen's done a really good job of mm-hmm. reading and responding to how that's been doing. She was training, like she said, five to six days a week before, so it's easy to want to try to maintain that. And if you can, that's excellent. But everyone's going to be a little bit different. Everyone has different complications and different levels of fatigue and whatnot that pop up during pregnancy. But if you nail things like your nutrition and your stress mm-hmm. reduction, things that we co- you know we'll cover in these other podcast uh, episodes here, then that can help support training to continue at a higher level long term because the stronger we can stay during pregnancy and the better in shape we can stay the less risk of things like hypertension gestational diabetes the healthier the baby is going to come out when you strengthen during pregnancy the baby has a better birth weight better neuromuscular coordination low risk of childhood obesity all kinds of good things and the mother you know less risk of joint aches and pains associated with pregnancy it's the most physically demanding event of your life like if you need to train for it because you know during the actual pregnancies uh, itself your body's gonna be under stress so being strong will help Mm -hmm. and and then afterwards the better shape you were in the more training you maintain during your pregnancy the easier it will be to get back on track afterwards So it's not a time to try to set all-time PRs necessarily or get into new dangerous styles of training that you hadn't been doing before. Stick to with what you were doing beforehand and just keep modifying to to stay with the best of your abilities regarding specific movement patterns. Um, So one thing regarding movement patterns that tends to change is obviously Mm -hmm. the front load on the body. So things like squat patterns uh, might become a little more challenging. We focused a lot on breathing as well, making sure that we're able to maintain a proper brace um, as baby grows and yeah as, as the baby grows and the belly grows the abdominal region starts to expand right so it's harder to control the midsection and maintain a solid mm-hmm. brace so you need to make sure you're paying attention to that on things especially like rdls deadlifts some of these other motions that are inherently a little more unstable and if you need to regress to a more stable variation like if it's a squat motion go to a leg press or a really supported split squat mm-hmm. style motion things like rdls might transition to things like seated leg curls and even then you may not be able to do all of the motions you're doing before just make sure you're uh you know acclimating to what your body can do okay a few things you really want to make sure you avoid um when you're number one is overly stretching that pelvic region there's a hormone called relaxin that increases during pregnancy which loosens those ligaments and muscles in the pelvic area so if you're doing things like adductors or sumo squats which i know a lot of females do going into pregnancy, yeah. right? Be careful with your stance width. Find something that's comfortable where the belly obviously doesn't get in the way, but you don't want to be too wide either and put unnecessary strain. Mm-hmm. Eileen's actually been having some like groin and adductor weakness and tightness yeah. um, because of how loose everything's getting. It's, hard, it's harder to stabilize while she moves around. And if you're putting undue stress on that from training, 
that's going to make that more more likely to have an injury risk. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, make sure you're not doing twisting, turning type motions, mm -hmm. no chest supported, uh, rowing type motions, or anything where you're putting pressure on the belly. Even things like hip thrusts, if you can put it down far enough in your legs, maybe fine. But yeah. don't try to force that motion. Like your glutes can grow with deep leg presses um, as well. So you know, make sure you're just paying attention to that, and then being on your back. So supine positions with lots of hard squeezes and long duration contractions, et cetera. The blood flow doesn't return to the mother's heart as easily. So that can be an issue if you're on your back exercising at high intensities. So just make sure you guys are paying attention to those few main things when adjusting exercises. Yeah, and then really quick, I wanna to touch on uh, just maintaining your cardiovascular health as well. Uh, that's an important piece of training as well. Uh, as especially during pregnancy where um, we have to have that um, capacity to, uh, you know, make it through uh, labor. Like Jack was saying, it is the biggest event of our lives. Um, and I noticed with Brooklyn, um, with our first one, so I was pushing for two hours total. And yeah. so imagine like a really, really long leg press set um, <laughs> that like where every single set you're like training to failure but then you're like doing that for two hours, you know? So you, you have to be able to, um, you know. It's actually funny because I've had clients mm -hmm. who like, well, you know, I train everyone right as long as I can during pregnancy. Yeah. And they like have leg press like the week before they go into labor and they mm -hmm. come out and they're like, Jack, I'm so glad we did leg press because that was exactly like a leg press. Like you're in the same position, yeah. you're like exerting and trying to breathe mm -hmm. whatnot, you know, um, while having this baby come out of you. So yeah. leg press is actually maybe a really good exercise to <laughs> include. And like I was actually coaching Eileen like in the delivery room for our first pregnancy. Yeah. Like she was in the middle of a hard set because like all the nurses were being super loud and mm -hmm. weird cueing. And I just, she was like, let him coach me. <laughs> and so yeah. I just coached her like she was on a leg press set. So uh, you know, that's specificity of training, if you will. Right. So cardiovascular <laughs> endurance is really important. Um, Eileen's had some low back issues because she sits for her job. So mm -hmm. a lot of sitting in, in, with the increased weight in front of the body, when she's going to act that will just change your body's mechanics, how you move. So we, getting up, moving around is one of the best ways to prevent that mm -hmm. sitting induced low back pain. You might get some round ligament issues in the front of the body as well. So just make sure like, it's not standing up and moving around too quickly that you're letting that area, you know, some heat can help. Um, light stretching, low stretching ligaments, but basically mm -hmm. blood flow to the front of the hip and do some light stretching can also help reduce that pain. Um, and yeah, just, it just start, steps and cardio will help just keep your body in better health as well. We know that neat or cardio that's not structured, cardio just walking in and out of the grocery store, for example, yeah. can have really beneficial health effects to yeah. it. So. And training will help with your posture too as your um, body weight shifts a little bit. Yeah, and post-pregnancy, mm -hmm. we'll talk about this at a later date, but there's, you know, mother's shoulder where you're holding your baby up here all the time and you can mm -hmm. get some shoulder impingements, et cetera. So basically be strong and mm -hmm. you and your baby have a higher likelihood of being healthy, okay? Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot more we can cover in training. Mm -hmm. We have a really cool YouTube video coming out where I actually put Eileen through a full session mm -hmm. and this uh, third trimester of her pregnancy. So you guys can see some of the activations we do. We like to basically, before we work out, do movements, some global movement patterns, just to see where she's at, some light breathing, bracing work. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely something we're gonna incorporate a lot of post-pregnancy as well. And then just you guys will be able to see how we manage her intensity, her volume, the types of movements that we choose. So stay tuned for that as well. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions on anything we covered today, we try to keep it short and sweet for you. Please feel free to drop a comment below or send us a message. We're happy to do any follow-up podcasts, any topics, or anything you guys might have. That's Jack Lane for part two of our pregnancy series. We'll see you for part three.